Hey guys, welcome back to Busted Buff. If you're new to my channel, my name's Dean. I pretty much take old, busted, discarded, unwanted furniture and try to turn it into something cool, unique, and buffed out. This week I'm going to be doing something a little bit different. I have decided or have been challenged by some people to do the Desert DIY Ugly Duckling Challenge. If you're not familiar with that, it was started by Desert DIY. She challenged a bunch of us other furniture flippers to take something ugly and turn it into something beautiful and useful again. It's a great opportunity. We're all going to be putting our videos on the same playlist. So some people have maybe never seen me before or seen some of the other furniture flippers before and their techniques and tricks. Um, we'll get the opportunity to do that. Uh, at the end of the week, she will pick a winner, and the agreement is we will all share the winner's video on our platform, whether that be YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, whatever we have available. But let me go ahead and give you an idea what I'm going to do with this piece. All right. If you're new to my channel, you're probably looking at this piece of furniture going, what is this guy thinking? <laughs> I would not pick that up off the side of the road. I have a problem when I see useful furniture just sitting on the side of the road. I can't just let it go to waste. You may see this and think it's busted and it's not worth the time, but I hope by the end of this video, you see that everything can be repurposed and made into something. And that way we stop filling up landfills with all this great furniture. Even this, this older, this like 90s Broyhill stuff, it's almost all solid wood. It sure is a waste to just have this in, you know crushed in the back of a trash truck. So as you can see, stuff falling off. We got a broken leg off of it. We're missing a drawer. We're missing some hardware. We've got artwork drawn on top, lots of scratches. Somebody decided to paint stuff on the top of it, but most of it's still here. <laughs> My idea for this piece is to make it into a roll around island. Recently I did a desk into an industrial roll around island and it sold for a really good price and it seemed to be very popular. So I wanted to try to do it again. This time I'm not going to do industrial. I'm going to do a little bit more modern. Uh, I'm thinking about maybe doing a green with wood stain. And I've got a couple other ideas for it. Of course, we're going to put casters and wheels on it. Um, maybe a hidden spice rack if I can figure that out. Like I said, I've got a few ideas for it. We'll see if it works out or not. But hopefully it'll be all good. Enjoy. Look who came to hang out. The buff baby. Say hi. Say hi. Say hi. Say hi. My neighbor had to work late, so he's gonna hang out with me for a few hours. Tell me how to build this island, right? <laughs> I wanna show, I picked up this butcher block from Home Depot for a hundred bucks. It's birch. It still has to be stained and sealed. I think it's bare wood. I'll figure it out when I get out of the package. But I think it even says on here somewhere, uh, stainable and sealable. Uh, but for a hundred bucks, building one from scratch. Yeah. Building one from scratch, I mean, it's really with the price of lumber right now, it's not that bad of a deal. And for what you're getting, I can't buy birch or anything that's really food safe. So I'm talking to some of the other furniture flippers right now that uh, make cutting boards to see what food safe top coats they use on this. And I'll figure that out so we can have a uh, food safe butcher block for a top on our island. I didn't get to do that on my last one. Um, with this one, this is actually, uh, this isn't solid real wood that's on top here. It's a laminate. So we'll get rid of this and put that on there and they can use it as a butcher block top. Right? <laughs> All right, the first thing I want to do is go ahead and get the base on so I can start getting an idea of the height and what I'm going to have to work with. Okay, I wanted to slow the video down for a second and cover this. I get these wheels off of Amazon. If y'all have seen my last island build video, I could literally take one finger and just do circles with that island. It rolled amazing. Um, with these five inch wheels and the caster on these, they work really great. I would love to be able to do metal wheels because I think they look nicer, but I want this piece to actually be functional. So I'm afraid the metal wheels will scratch up somebody's wood or tile floors. 
when they go to roll it around. I want them to be able to roll this outside for barbecues or roll it into a game room as a bar or whatever they want um, and not have to worry about their floors. The only downside for the ones that have rubber are if you keep this braking gauge too long, sometimes it'll put a divot in this rubber wheel and then, uh, you know, it'll boom, 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 be like those Walmart shopping carts that you hate to get. So, so that's the only thing you have to keep in mind whenever you buy these. The reason I went ahead and got them out is because I want to try to make sure I can get this island to 36 inches tall. That's what your kitchen countertop heights are at. So I wanted at least that height. So if we need to cheat it, cheat it or make spacers, I may even leave that top on and put this top directly on top of that one to cheat us another inch up to get there. So, um, but we'll get these out and get a measurement and see what we need to do to reach that height. Let's see what we got. We are just a hair under 36 inch. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to mount them like that and then I'll put that butcher block top directly on top of the boards that are already here and we'll be above 36 inch. Pretty sweet, worked out good. All right, I'm just assembling where the leg was broke off in the corner here. And then I'm gonna take the entire piece and enclose it in quarter inch plywood. I'm going to sand the entire piece down get it ready for glue and primer. I don't think I've ever shown this so I figured I'd stop and show it. This is my bit for my Craig jig for the pocket holes. I need to recess screws in here to put screws in from the bottom to hold this top down. So I just take and set that Allen head right where I want it to recess in. Tighten it down like so. And then I know it's going to recess about uh, a third of the way through that bottom board so that my screws have been going from right there so they go in the board about a half inch. So we got a half inch holding on here and a half inch holding on here. So, see, pretty cool, huh? Alright, so I've got this idea. I want to put a put in a pull-out spice rack right here, so this thing could be used in the kitchen for spices, or it could be uh, wheeled outside by the barbecue grill and have all your spices in it. I know it'll be easy to fit the small spice canisters in, so I grabbed some of the big ones. It's going to be a pretty tight fit, but I think I can pull it off. I don't want to take up too much room making too large of one, but this should be easy enough to put at least three rows of spices in here. I'm going to use pocket holes to assemble the outside frame of the spice rack. Now cutting out a piece of quarter inch ply for the backing of the spice rack. Now I'm going to check fitment. Everything looks all right. Start figuring out how I want to put the shelves in here for the spices. The two lower shelves I'm going to do for tall spices and leave a little bit extra room. I'm using blocks so that I can get the exact same measurements and then I just transferred that measurement to a piece of wood so that all of them would be level. 
Now I'm going to build a little guard on the front to keep those spices from falling out. Sand everything down. Colossus is now nine months old as of yesterday. He's still got a little over a year of growing to go. The big old head. Big old head. You ready to get to work? 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 Oh. I have a feeling if I didn't slow this down that I would have a bunch of people that have wished I had slowed it down so they could see how I did it. So I'm just going to take a few minutes and explain how I'm going to do these tracks. So when I went to get my measurement, just to keep it simple, I stacked both of these tracks on top of each other and then that way I took a measurement from here to here. So it would be the same measurement as this being mounted up here. So I'm going to use this as my guide to keep that track straight so I'm not having to sit here and fold with a tape measure. Alright, we're just going to draw a line here. That's where the edge of my spice rack will come to. And then I'll put a cap over the end of it, kind of like a drawer front. If you pull your track straight up to the edge, a lot of times you end up with the drawer not wanting to shut completely. So give yourself a little bit of room for the drawer to be able to pull in and shut. So I'm just going to give it about an eighth inch, maybe a little bit more. Put that in there. It's my guide. Get it open. One about eighth inch there. And guys, I'm not a professional carpenter. I'm not a professional drawer installer or spice rack maker. This is just the way that I've figured out how to do these. So it may be incorrect. So do your research before you do as I do. <laughs> or just don't do as I do. All right, just do the same process for this top track. It's kind of hard getting in here and getting underneath there, but we got it. Okay, we're just going to pull it out a little bit and screw the first one down. Do the same thing on the bottom. Now I'm going to start enclosing around the spice rack. I'm just going to use uh, two 1x3s and plywood. To get a good even spacing, I just taped a piece of quarter inch plywood on the top and bottom of the inside of the spice rack. I'll take those out after I get it permanently mounted. Now I'm going to start building the shelf. I'm going to trim the entire piece out in quarter inch trim. It's like quarter inch by one inch. This is just going to give it a little bit more of a modern look. I'm also going to add a little bit of uh, detail onto the piece with these as well. Mail, 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 mail. Mm. All right. Turned out pretty good. You did it! 1.30! It means uh, time to stop working, time to start drinking. Can you go drink it? <laughs> no, you got it. We ain't done working. We wanted to test all this stuff out before we put it on the store and make sure everything's good. Oh yeah, that one's a lot better. It's for your coffee in the morning. You got this. You got this. It actually turned out really good. I'm 
going to add two center trim pieces around this entire piece. So I went ahead and just figured out my measurements and then cut a block of wood. That way I could just go all the way around and know that they would all line up perfectly around the piece and I'm not having to sit there consistently with a tape measure. So I'm going to try to put a paper towel holder right here. I'm just going to wing it. I've never done this before, so I can't really explain how I'm doing stuff because I'm just going to make it up as I go along. So I'll just time lapse it, but if I need to stop and cover anything, I'll make sure I do that. But I think it'll be cool and it'll give it a handle to pull it around too. Okay, I wanted to slow it down for a second while I was thinking about it. You may be wondering why I'm putting these legs far to the outside like this, uh, the, instead of about, you know, right here, which may look a little bit nicer aesthetically. First reason is the brake. I want people to be able to access the brakes to put them on so these things aren't moving around. They don't want it to move around. So we need to have it a little bit further out to be able to access the brake. And the second reason is, since we're not adding any height, because we're doing 36, 37 inch uh, countertop height, which you want to stick, whenever you're building stuff like this, if it's going to have a seating area, like the lip on this one, you want to stick to either tabletop height, countertop height, or bar height, because it'll just make it more convenient for your customers to find bar stools for those, because they sell bar stools for tabletop height, countertop height tables, and bar top height tables. So if you get into a weird funky size, they're gonna have a hard time finding a bar stool that, that fits their piece just right. So anyways, another reason that I'm putting it to the outside like this is because since we're not adding any uh, spacers to it to raise it, because we're already with the wheels, we're already at 36, 37 inch. I'm using these one inch stainless steel screws that come with the wheels. I don't wanna just screw into this half inch board. I, it may be fine, but I would feel a lot better screwing through the half inch board and into the outside framing around it. So I know it's gonna be at least three of the screws I'll be able to get into framing. So I know the wheels will be structurally sound and they're not gonna break off or fold underneath the piece. So just wanted to stop and explain that real quick, guys. While I have the piece upside down, I'm going to go ahead and tape off the bottom side of the top since that's all going to stay wood grain. Now, I don't know if it's coincidence or not. After telling everybody about the red primer, my Home Depot is completely out of the red primer. So I had to go to the professional gray uh, primer. It definitely does not lay down as thick as the red did, though. I'm fighting against the cold right now. I'm trying to get this piece done for the Ugly Duckling Challenge, so you will see me using the heat gun and the heater a lot, especially when I start laying the paint on. You'll see me run the heat gun over it. That's not to get it dry faster so I can get the next coat on. That's actually just to get it to dry so that it doesn't start, uh, I wouldn't say running, but it'll get kind of saggy just from the temperatures being so cold and it taking so long to dry. So I'll hit it with the heat gun just to ensure that it dries a little bit to stick and doesn't start getting that little bit of sag in the paint. 
I'm going to do three coats of the green and I'm going to do two coats of uh, satin polyacrylic on this piece. A little dusty. All right, when I was looking for a food safe top coat to put on this butcher block, I made sure to get something that was already a food safe wood, which is this birch. But when I was looking for a food safe top coat, everything was conflicting and there were so many different opinions and so many different products. When I Googled it, I just got overwhelmed. I'm like, nobody was on the same page. Nobody was recommending the same stuff. So I reached out and asked some of the fellow YouTube flippers what their favorite food safe top coat was and it turned out to be the exact same thing. Everybody had a different opinion. Everybody had something different that they liked. So the ladies at Secondhand Ohana sent me a link to this stuff and I was able to look at it on Amazon and there was like, I don't know, 4,000 sales with a five star review. So I read through some of the reviews and stuff and everybody seems to really love it and it's only $9. So I figured I would give this a try. It is walrus oil, cutting board oil. It has coconut oil, beeswax, pure mineral oil, vitamin E. So it says you apply it uh, for 12 to 24 hours and then wipe away uh, excess. So we're going to give this a try and if it works good, I will just include it with the purchase of whoever buys this so they will have it and be able to touch up their top whenever they need to. I mean, for nine bucks, it's you know not that big a deal. If I ever need it again, I'll just buy another one. But we're going to give this a try. Again, I'm sure a lot of people are going to have different opinions on stuff that they like to use for a top coat, but we're going to give this Waller's Oil a try because it had five-star reviews on Amazon. <laughs> so, all right, let's get at it and see how it works. Okay, I didn't realize my camera wasn't recording as I was putting the oil on, but I just took a rag and wiped it on. I used three quarters of this bottle. There's only about that much left in this bottle now. Which, first time putting oil on it, I'm sure the wood absorbed most of it. So the next time it needs oil added to it, I'm sure it'll last a little bit longer since it's not absorbing into dry wood. I can't really give an opinion on what I think of this product because I'm not keeping it, I'm putting it up for sale, or maybe I will keep it, and then I can give an opinion. It looks like a giant cutting board, so we know it's food safe. So that's really my only opinion on it. As I was laying it down, all of a sudden the wood would start getting dry with the rag. So that's how much of it it was absorbing. I would get about that far and then it would just get dry and I would have to apply more and more. When I first went to apply it, I took and I poured it down and it soaked in really quick and you could see where I poured it. So if you do this, I recommend pouring it on your rag and then applying it. Um, it's all evened out now so you can't see where I poured it. So good thing there. Um, but at first I was a little nervous because I thought it was going to have a big dark spot where I took and just poured a bunch of it on the top. But looks really nice it feels real nice so it doesn't feel it's it's already absorbed so much in there it doesn't even feel oily now but this bottle is definitely very oily that's why i got the paper towel holding it and it won't drop it on it so that stuff is slick so there you go that's why i, I guess that's my opinion <laughs> i can't really give one so looks nice Is that? How cool is that? <laughs> Love it.
How cool did that turn out? Nobody will ever guess that this thing used to be a desk. I hope if you take anything away from my video today that it's if you see a solid wood piece of furniture, even a partial wood piece of furniture sitting on the curb, that it can be repurposed into something. It doesn't have to add to our landfills. It doesn't have to get crushed in the back of a garbage truck. I hope you enjoyed watching. I enjoyed building it. I put myself in a heck of a time crunch to meet the deadline for the Ugly Duckling Challenge. It was kind of a last minute idea, but it was well worth it in the end. I got about three days worth of work into it, and then normally it takes me about three days to edit a video, and I did this one from 6 o'clock in the morning, and it's now 2 a.m. So, but you're watching it, so it was well worth it, and what a neat build. If you haven't already, like, subscribe, and hit that little bell icon if you'd like to get notifications whenever I post up new content. Also, leave me a comment below. Those likes and comments go a long way in the YouTube algorithm, getting my videos seen and shown to others. I'll try to get links to all the products I use in this video put in the description below this video. There will be uh, information there as well if you'd like to tip the teacher. There's buy me a coffee and Venmo account or my Amazon wish list if you want to say thanks or help support the channel. Remember to check out that Ugly Duckling uh, playlist to see some of the other furniture flippers on YouTube and see what they did with their Ugly Duckling pieces. And thank Corey over at Desert DIY for setting up the challenge and letting me get involved with it. Appreciate it, guys. I'll see you all in the next flip. Okay, I normally don't do this, but I had to put this back in the video. I did not realize until I was editing the video how confused Boss Baby was trying to figure out who I was talking to. You gotta remember, I just have a GoPro on a stand in the garage, so there's not even a phone screen to look at. <laughs> so he, he keeps looking around so confused and looking at me like, have you lost your mind? Until I finally acknowledge him, he's like, oh, okay, you're talking to me. <laughs> Poor kid. what Boss Baby can do now. Right. He's crawling and trying to walk and getting into everything. Come on. Come on. <laughs> Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on.